Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your Starseed reading for the March Equinox 2020 or Aries season or whenever you are watching this. This is for you, even if you're syncing up with it years down the line. For those of you tuning into it right around the Equinox or the beginning of Aries season here, um, a few interesting tidbits. I actually just turned the camera on uh, exactly half an hour after the the exact moment of the equinox was which was like 8 49 p.m pacific time i actually slept through the moment of the equinox i had intended to sit up and meditate through it um, i've been meditating on and off throughout the day and i just fell asleep guys i, I fell asleep for about 20 minutes <laughs> right around the moment of the equinox I don't entirely know what the significance of that was, but I feel like I feel like everything has been syncing up for me so well lately that for some reason, like I could be disappointed that I fell asleep and I could feel like I missed out on something or I could feel like I screwed up, but I don't feel like that at all. I feel like for some reason I was supposed to be asleep. I don't know if something was happening in my dream time or what, but something about that was synchronous. It's actually strange that I'm even, a even able to film this reading for you right now because a few weeks ago I had intended to film the Starseed reading for you guys on the Equinox, but then of course all of this uh, quarantine stuff happened and I was like, oh, you know, my husband and my stepson are going to be home and I'm not going to be able to do it. But despite the fact that here we are supposed to be at home, you know, self-isolating, we're not like on total lockdown here, but we are supposed to be home. Um, the universe like cleared out my house and here I am having the equinox alone which is really nice I was able to meditate all day and I did have a really interesting experience earlier earlier this afternoon while I was meditating I sat down to meditate and pretty quickly I felt I could hear myself chanting in my head and that was a little unusual because I, I almost never like chant and I never use mantras when I when I meditate. But today I could it was just natural for me to start chanting. I stand in solidarity with the highest light and I could actually hear people chanting it with me. It was a really interesting experience. And after I did that for a few minutes, I kind of fell into like a pretty deep uh, altered state and you know I lost time and when I came back to it I was really getting a sense that something something was going on like there's this energy around this equinox that I'm kind of picking up on it feels like we are creating a pool of light anybody willing to tap into it can add their light to this pool uh, this like interdimensional pool of light. Uh, it's like, you know, people from other dimensions are are adding to this pool as well. And it's here to help guide us and heal us and support us through this very significant time of change on the planet right now. So this this pool of light, I think, is going to be we're going to be building it up and adding to it. And then, you know, we're also Star seeds specifically are playing a role of grounding that light down into the earth because, you know, that's one of the things that we do having been from uh, around the universe and other universes and from other dimensions and coming here. And it's easier for us to ground those interdimensional energies onto the planet, um, you know, than somebody who has just only ever had a life as a human on earth. So if that resonates with you, uh, even if you're watching this years from now, if you want to like tap into that, if you want to stand in solidarity with light and add your light to this pool of light and then be like a conduit that brings it down into earth, go for it. Do whatever, um, you know, whatever kind of practices you like. The practice, the modality, the technique is not important here. What is important here is just you being the like a circuit between the light and the earth. Okay, I think that's all I have to say about that. Um, before we jump into the three piles, I did pull these. This is just extra here, these three cards here. Um, for a, This is about 
like a general reading for the Starseed Collective. I actually just got this deck. It's the Golden Thread Tarot, and it's like resonating with me so hard right now because it's, you know, obviously it's black with these gold streaks of light. This color scheme is really representative to me of this energy of moving from the darkness of Pisces season and all of these confusions at moving into Aries season and spring and bringing the light down into the darkness. So let's see what we got here. Four of Swords. That is significant to me because I was literally just asleep. Clearly we are in a deep, meditative, restful state. That is... <laughs> the whole planet is, is in a Four of Swords energy right now. That's a really perfect card. We're all sitting at home, deep in... I, you know, we're either enjoying this cocooning hibernation phase or we're being forced into it. But either way, we are sitting in a deep regenerative reset. So like we're so inactive right now. It's crazy. Three of swords. Heartbreak. Not hard to understand how that is relevant to us right now. Everybody is worried. Everybody is in pain. Everybody is scared. We don't know what's happening. The collective right now is so stuck in that feeling of why is this happening? How can this possibly be happening? This is so horrible. This is so incomprehensibly painful. And it's like chaos on a level that is impossible to rationalize and navigate Yep, three of swords. The hermit, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so these three... <laughs> yep. These three cards, absolutely, absolutely reflecting what all humanity is going through right now. So, so much. The Hermit, if you can see, he's he's got his lamp. The Hermit is the light bringer, guys. Look at him. He's got his lamp right here. He's holding it up. It's almost like he is t acting like a lighthouse. He's on the edge of a cliff here. And see how the light reflects off this gold foil, off these spirals. Beautiful. We are all being challenged to look within, to look at our pain, to sit in our meditative, contemplative, comatose even states, to find the light within ourselves. That's what the hermit does, right? He finds the light within himself. He doesn't need to find it anywhere else. He is deep, deep within, in the, within his own self. He finds the light there. He brings it forth and he shines it forth for others. Um, that's the, the final phase of, you know, the hermit's um, little job. You know, first he goes within, he finds his own, own light, and then when he's ready, he can bring it forth and shine it forth to others. And that's what this hermit is doing. But, you know, he had to go within and he had to be alone. He had to be in solitude, in isolation, in order to find his light and bring it out to the world. Yeah, these three cards are such a mirror for the, the entire collective right now. Um, okay, I think I feel ready to get into your three piles. I'll see you guys in your reading. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. I almost don't believe it, guys. I actually just did your whole reading. I said all these amazing things, and I had m beautiful insights and all these good messages for you guys, and then I found out that the camera wasn't recording. So I'm going to attempt to observe that with neutrality and forge ahead <laughs> as irritated as I am. Not irritated. I'm just going to come down into the moment and retransmit your message because either there was something that I missed, something I interpreted incorrectly, or somebody, something is trying, some little pest, some little etheric pest is trying to prevent you guys from getting your reading. I wouldn't really surprised <laughs> if that is the case because yours is really high frequency. 
um, the center of your spread, you have awakening crossed by the lovers. So for some of you, maybe you're having your starseed awakening right now. For others of you that have been awake for a long time, you your awakening is it's a whole new level. Like if you can think back to the very beginning of your awakening, how what did it feel like in the beginning? How intense was that? How much of a step up was it in your consciousness? That is happening again. And I think this time it'll be like, you know, sevenfold more than that. And you have this aspect of some kind of like trine with between you and the sun and the moon. The moon card isn't here, but there's um, your higher your uh, higher self or your chronic position is the sun. Getting lots and lots of downloads from the sun, you guys. I feel like you are resonating on the frequency of the sun. If you want to listen to like solfeggio music that is tuned to the frequency of the sun, do that. That would be really beneficial. If you want to read uh, the law of one, the raw material, do that. That is really... It has a lot of interesting and useful like information about it in you know, in those books, in the Law of One books. But more than that, it's a transmission of like sun frequency. <laughs> and down here, the Three of Cups in your base position, you first of all, that's just an indication of your soul family supporting you, and it's that three energy um, I was talking about with this trine. But it's also the moon directly downloading um, information to you. So you're getting like activations from cosmic bodies in a major way. And uh, did I mention, did I talk about the, the fact that you're, the lovers is crossing your awakening here? That is a, such a signal to me of your alignment with your higher selves, with all of your, all the layers and layers and layers of your expanded self. You are coming into alignment. Um, and that is, that is happening synchronously with your awakening, either your first awakening or your like reawakening, you're leveling up because It's easy to think of like one is the cause of the other, but really they happen together. They are one thing. You come into alignment when you wake up because the awakening causes you to align. But at the same time, you can't you can't wake up unless you're already coming into alignment. Major, major internal alchemy going on here, guys. And on your linear level, you're moving from your recent past, the Four of Crystals, into the future. Your near future is the Knight of Swords. So you've been coming out of a period of stagnancy, of everything feeling kind of blah, 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 maybe a little worrying about money or your physical security, but not in a major way, just in kind of like a bleh, <laughs> a, a stagnant bleh kind of way. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way I can describe it. But things are going to, as you work on your alignment and everything st it starts to shift for you, as you get these new activations, you are going to be like jumping off a cliff into a portal guys like once you go through that portal nothing is going to be the same for you again in a good way in a good way and this is causing you understandably quite a little uh quite a bit of anxiety you got the nine of swords down here in your self position um but as i was saying when i originally did your reading <laughs> i don't I don't think that this Nine of Swords is actually that big of a deal for you guys. Um, star seeds typically, you know, we had these weird childhoods and we had these really shitty teenage years. And even as young adults, our shit tends to be, you know, pretty catty wampus. Um, but we do that so that we can, like, we choose those kind of lives so that we can get rid of all that crap when we're younger and go through that. And it accelerates our evolution. And so all of us, Starseeds have always been, had, you know, anxieties. So you guys have already been all through that. And I think the anxiety you're feeling right now is like an echo of that. It's echoing out. And as time goes on, you're going to be leaving your anxiety behind more and more and more until maybe one day it's practically gone. So I feel like I can sense you guys sitting there knowing that you're anxious, knowing that it's Partly physiological, just, you know, with an imbalance of your neurotransmitters, partly just a reflection of the collective. You're, you know, absorbing and reflecting all of the anxieties in the planet right now. And partly just you continuing to work through your, your stuff. And also just partly you reacting to the major activations that are coming in. When you're getting that much light and that much energy coming in from the cosmos. It's anxiety inducing. Um, 
So that's all okay. I think you guys know it's okay. And you're going to, you're going to sail through that and it's going to be fine. And in your environmental position, it's the two of crystals. So I see you guys sense feeling like you're kind of walking on shifting sands, you know, when you're walking on the beach on sand, it feels like your feet are kind of squirting out underneath you and that you're not walking on a stable surface, but that's really only a surface level instability. D you know, even so much as like six inches under the sand, it's packed, it's hard. And then deep, deep down there's the earth, you know, the earth is still there. It's just a surface level instability. And, and, um, I think you guys won't have really have too much trouble working through that. That's also kind of a minor energy, but your hopes and fears, you guys have the Empress. So I think, you know, you're kind of stepping up into this position of like sovereign, sovereign authority. You, you know, you're powerful. You're remembering how powerful you are and you're coming back into your own. You're remembering your soul gifts, your skills, And just the, like, you're starting to get a sense of the innate power of your own consciousness, not power over others, not power in any kind of bad way, but just that, like the sheer power, you can sit there and you can feel yourself glowing, glowing with it. And it is beautiful and it can kind of scare you a little bit. That's why you fear, fear being the empress. It's almost like you're getting cold feet before your coronation. Um, but as time goes on, you know, just like how you're leaving behind this nine of swords energy, you're going to leave behind your fears about being the empress and you're just going to embody her more and more because you are learning to be star seeds walking the earth. And that brings me down to the oracle cards. Um, your first one is earth school. It says life lessons, soul growth, study and higher learning. Look at that. This is a reminder that you need to learn to... Learn to live in your human body. Learn to live in the human society. That's actually what you came here to do. As much as sometimes you might want to escape it, <laughs> and as much as you are aligning with your interdimensional selves, while you're doing that, don't forget to be grounded because the Empress is earthly. She's grounded. She's part of the earth plane, right? She's a human. You're going to, you know, you're in your human body walking among the humans. Don't forget it. That's why you came here, guys. It's why you came here. And you're here to learn as well as to give. So you're earn, learning your earthly lessons. Star ancestors with these Egyptian pyramids brought me so much back to this, this sense I have of you guys resonating with the frequency of the sun. And I really, really think that reading the raw material, reading the law of one could be really, really beneficial for you guys, both on an intellectual level, just gaining some of the information that's in there. Not that you guys should take it as gospel, never take anything as gospel, but just reading it and exposing yourself to that level of frequency is activating for you. It'll help you unlock <laughs> hidden secrets. I was just going to say hidden secrets and I looked back down on the card. So yeah, resonate with the frequency of the sun. It'll help you unlock hidden secrets because you have some kind of, your soul in past lives has, has had some kind of connection to the sun. And we also have Sirius coming in here. Syrian beings, Syrian messengers, bringing harmony and balance. If you guys already know that you've had lives in Sirius or you already resonate with Sirius, then this is just a confirmation and maybe you're going to be getting messages from, from home, from your Syrian brethren, or if you've never resonated with them before. They might be coming in for you as like brand new, right? Star seeds never limit yourselves, never go, oh, you know, I'm Palladian and like, that's it, right? No, there's always more and more levels for you to discover. And even if you'd never had any lives in a certain, you know, area of the cosmos, you can always start to resonate with them and they can come in and hang out with you. So watch out for serious stuff, guys. Definitely coming in. And I think they have something to give you. Look at how the... <laughs> Look at how this being is holding his hands out. They have something to give you. They have messages for you. And Syrians, for me, serious energy um, really is like knowledge and wisdom on, on the intellectual side of things, which really goes along with your star ancestors and your earth school cards. Yeah, you, you guys are being asked to 
learn something on an intellectual level. Okay, and I think the only card we haven't mentioned here is the outcome position is your three of crystals. Lots of lots of themes of threes in here. We got your your triad between you, the sun, and the moon. You have your foundation of three of cups. You even have three people here in your awakening, your your awakening self, and these two lovers in the lovers card. Um, so the three of crystals for as an outcome card is a good sign. Tells you that you're going to be off to a good start. There's going to be something you have to work on, a project for you to learn. That you're going to have support in working on this project or this piece of learning. Um, the only thing about it is that it's not certain exactly how all this is going to unfold. Unfold, Like, you know, once you get farther along this journey, this awakening or this reawakening, you're going to have to like check back in and see what trajectory you're on. Because I feel like you guys... Different timelines are open for you, especially right now. It's like literally the equinox, like it's within one hour of the equinox itself when I'm filming this. Timelines are open for you. And as you move forward, you're going to be like tuning into different ones, depending on the choices that you make. And I don't say that to scare you guys. I, I mean that to, I think you guys are like, you guys are going to tune into the the highest frequently highest frequency and most optimal timelines because you have this like you have all of the support and all of this high resonance and you're being guided by by the sun and by your soul family so i don't see you guys taking any missteps but i think what you can do is just remember that even when, if it feels like you made a misstep even if you feel like you fucked something up or did something wrong or didn't do something good enough or should have done something else you're already on the right track. You're already on point. And even if something seems like a fuck up, there is energetic levels to that and ripples to that that ripple out that you can't see that are probably, they're beneficial. They were the reason that that happened. Like for example for me I really intended to sit and meditate through the moment of the equinox instead I fell asleep and I was disappointed but I think there was a purpose to that there for some reason I was supposed to fall asleep and since everything else in my life has been syncing up and has been so synchronous somehow I trust that falling asleep was a synchronicity and maybe I went out of my body and did something there that I don't remember just because I don't understand at this moment why I fell asleep, <laughs> why that was what I was supposed to be doing, I trust ex in like intrinsically that that was right for me to be doing. So move forward into your journey here, trusting every step that you take and know that you are already, you're so aligned that you can't help but find your way into the most optimal timelines. And I think that is it. Happy Equinox, guys. I hope to see you again soon. Okay, Pile 2, welcome to your reading. For some reason, you guys have a nine-card spread, past, present, and future. Um, the other two piles got Celtic Cross, and when I was dealing them, and I felt that you guys should have the nine-card spread, I knew there was going to be something something about this reading, and I flip out these cards, and yeah, there, there is something a little bit hard to put my finger on about it. Uh, first of all, your first card up at the top here in your past is the Emperor. And normally I would take the Emperor as a really good sign, but immediately, like, it's sitting next to the Four of Cups, this, like, little sulky bitch, and the Five of Wands, that conflict energy. And I just didn't get a good vibe from this Emperor. I don't think the Emperor, this Emperor is you. I feel like you've almost been, like, under the thumb of some, like, male figure. That, well, it doesn't have to be male, some masculine figure, some figure holding masculine energy, which can really obviously be a woman. It can also be a structure, like a social structure, some, something, something that has been imposing its authority on you in, an, in a really like patriarchal way. It is interesting to hear myself say these things because I'm not really big on like hating on the patriarchy. I mean, obviously I hate all of the hierarchical structures that have been unfair to everybody. I hate imbalance of power. 
but I don't hate the masculine in and of itself. And I don't think we need to tear down the masculine in order to bring balance between the masculine and the feminine. I think as the feminine is nat is being raised up and it's going to gain her equal footing with the masculine. And we want to do that without creating a further imbalance, right? I really don't want to see the masculine thrown out or men being like denigrated or any of that. And I'm not saying that that's what's happening with you guys, that you guys are seeking an imbalance, but, um, I guess those comments were just to give a little context here about kind of where I'm coming from with this. So I really don't want any it to sound like I am like poo-pooing on the masculine because I want to see the masculine and the feminine in perfect balance, in perfect harmony. They desperately, desperately need each other and cannot function properly without each other. But you are definitely coming from some kind of, you've had a really, you've lived a negative experience with the patriarchy, I think is, is one way of putting it out. You'll have to fill in, fill in the details. And currently, you're, luckily you're breaking out of this, your ace of crystals in the center here. This is a new reality. It's a new physical reality. You're, you're. Having that Ace of Crystals in the middle there, especially look at how the color is different. It, I feel like the Equinox for you is almost like a portal. You're stepping through the portal and yeah, shit, right, <laughs> right next to the Ace of Crystals here, you have this Five of Crystals, which, let's see if I can get to focus on it. Five of Crystals is always like poverty and this card especially though is like conflict and change, instability coming from conflict and change in your material world. But all of these moons are like spiraling out this door. So I see you guys, really, you're walking out the door. Some of you might be walking out of a door, literally, like out of a parent's home or out of a bad relationship or out of a job, even out of a country or a city that's become toxic to you. You're, you're leaving something. You're walking out the door. If you haven't, if you haven't walked out the door quite yet, this is your your signal from the universe that, you know, go for it. You want to walk out that door. And I think you're prepared to walk out the door because you guys have six of wands, which is your, your triumph. You've finally gotten yourself to a place where you can walk out that door and you can leave all of this uh, bleh behind you. In the future, <laughs> that's really cool. In the future, you're coming into some really feminine energy. The moon, five of cups, and Queen of Crystals, Emperor Diagonal from the Queen of Crystals. So the moon is obviously such a, such a feminine card. You're going to be really leaning into your intuition, your feminine power, your feminine energy, water, magnetism, gravity, and flow. Oh, also seeing seeing this like opposed from the emperor like this, emperor up here uh, in your past, directly um, flowing down into the moon down here. Uh, this could also be maybe you didn't have a masculine paradigm around you. Maybe you, maybe you yourself were very very masculine. Um, I can relate to that. I'll use myself as an example. You know, I'm in a female body, but uh, for most of my life, I have had like really really masculine energies. Um, I'm like really, uh, I can be really aggressive. The way I talk to people uh, is really off-putting. <laughs> you know, the way I stand, my mannerisms. Um, I'm not like a, I don't know how to, how to like navigate like female social circles. Um, I, I'm not agreeable at all. You know, I'm really argumentative, uh, for, I went through a period of like 10 years where I was almost completely left-brained. I was completely like, obsessed with logic and data and, and reason and doing everything the hard way. <laughs> so, so I completely understand what it's like to be in a female body, uh, and be resonating really masculine. Um, and you know, that's, it's entirely possible to have that experience. Um, and that doesn't have to necessarily have to have anything to do with your, your sexual identity, your sexuality, or your gender your gender identity, although it can, um, depending on, you know, how you are running these energies through your body, they can manifest, um, in any kind of way for me. Um, you know, 
my masculine energy in my as opposed to my female body was really just manifesting in an intellectual way. Uh, but of course, you, for you, the energy could could be manifesting, you know, externally in your environment with negative relationships with masculine figures, you know, internally in your intellect, in your sexual preferences, or in your gender identity itself. Whatever, <laughs> whatever your masculine paradigm was, uh, you're flipping the script and you are learning to lean into your feminine energies. And this is a perfect time for that because um, essentially the planet has moved back into a feminine archetypal paradigm. You know, we go through these uh, periods on the earth where masculine energy is in power or is dominant and that, or is awake and then we go through a period where the masculine kind of takes a back seat, goes a little bit to sleep, and the feminine rises up. And we are just beginning this new feminine paradigm, which if you are into anything new age or spiritual or esoteric at all, it doesn't have take much digging to hear about something about that. <laughs> so you can look up that if you want. Um, but basically, this is a perfect time to be reflecting feminine energies um, but this isn't going to be entirely easy on you because you've got this five of cups. Um, wow, this, uh, wow. First of all, it's a cup. It's, it's a cups card, right? Which is water, which is feminine. But also, doesn't this remind, like, look at this card, guys. Doesn't that remind you of something very feminine? <laughs> it's almost like the opening to a womb. And it is, this is like a, like a rift in the earth. And it's like some kind of a, it's a rift born of deep, deep, like elemental shifts. And it has upset, you know, some of these cups. So the changes you guys are going through are, are like deep down. And yeah, elemental is the word I want to use for that. You guys are connecting with the earth and you can feel the earth shifting beneath your feet, like on a deep, like, Almost like you can feel earthquakes. You can feel the tectonic plate shifting beneath you. And that's going to be manifesting in your, in your life, in your external environment with changes in, you know, your daily life and the way your physical life plays out every day um, or through, through emotional pain. If you feel like everything is falling apart around you and you don't know how to quite navigate that emotionally, yeah, I mean, you got five, you got three fives, guys. So you definitely <laughs> um, going through a bit of a rough patch, but it's okay because the last card here, you know, if we read this like a book, the final sentence of your story is the Queen of Crystals. You will be totally embodying your feminine paradigm, your feminine archetype. You will have the world in the palm of your hand. You will have tamed a tiger <laughs> you know like the moon is rising behind you and this is also being so comfortable both in your femininity and in your physical environment wow it's almost like this moon this moon you're right now you're getting major activations from the moon and soon once you come into your own and you become really comfortable once you get stabilized after all of these shifts, like it's all going to be distilled down and you're going to have the power. You're going to have, be able to feel your feminine power in the palm of your hand. Yeah. For star seeds, you guys are going through a really like, like a physical shifts. Um, this reading isn't so much, you know, your cosmic ascension, although it's definitely part of that, but it's right now your your kind of spiritual development is playing out in it's playing out in the physical, in your physical body, in your physical world, and you are going through you're working through the masculine feminine polarity. That's I think the easiest way to sum this up. <laughs> so let's see what oracle cards you guys get.
the cosmic heart, devotion, potency, make your life a moving prayer. Yeah, this is like a piece of advice for you guys about how you can lean into your feminine paradigm and how you can make this easier for yourself. Like where where are you getting all this, uh, these activations? Where are you getting this inspiration to become more feminine? It's from the cosmic heart itself. Like that's like the heart, if you can imagine like the heart chakra of the universe or of the entire cosmos of all of existence, Imagine that all of existence has a heart chakra <laughs> and you're like getting like beamed energy straight from that. So you're really being asked to open up to love and to infuse everything you do with love. Imagine the thing, whatever you love most, whether that's a person or an activity or a place or an idea, whatever it is, whatever you love the most, capture the essence of that love and how can you do everything with that frequency? Do everything with that frequency of love. That is that is what you're being called to do here. Perspective. None of this matters. Zoom out. Common ground. Man, you, you guys are getting like advice cards. Okay, so I got my, this card for myself uh, this morning, actually. Um, this is... If you're struggling with all, all of these, this applies to your personal shifts right now and to like the global events. <laughs> this is saying like, hey, none of this is as like threatening as it seems. Remember that. OK, so this card is basically saying, remember that. This one life you're living is like a blip in your whole soul's experience. So if your whole life is a blip, how much even smaller of a, of a problem are the little problems in your life? When you feel overwhelmed by whatever crises you're facing, zoom out, zoom out to this perspective of your whole life, zoom out to the perspective of the higher, you know, the other version of yourself that lives in whatever star system you guys identify with, zoom out, Farther that, zoom out to your oversoul, zoom out to your overmind up in the 10th dimension or wherever you think your oversoul is anchored. Zoom out all the way to source, zoom out all the way past source, zoom out all the way to the void. Zoom out however far you need to go to gain perspective and then you can see that if you can get a big enough perspective, almost like nothing is as traumatizing as we think it is. All you got to do is zoom out. As far as you need to go. Yep, that one. All paths lead home. Inner authority, intuition, turn your gaze within. Yep, this goes perfectly with the other two. If you ever, guys, if you ever feel, yep, okay. If you ever feel like you are lost in a labyrinth and you can't find your way out and you are entirely alone. You are like lost in the dark, in a dark maze and you have no idea what to do and you're afraid you might be stuck there forever and that you're just going to die there or even worse, exist there forever. There's one thing you need to remember is that you already have everything you need. You have all the tools you need to get yourself out of the labyrinth you know, you already know how to get through the labyrinth. More than that, you've done it before. You've done it before hundreds, thousands of times before. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You know exactly what you need to do. All paths lead home. All paths lead home, guys. Remember that. In your darkest, darkest moments, when you are the most scared, the most forlorn, the most... Like that feeling of being completely alone with your back against the wall and the ceilings coming down on you. Remember that all paths lead home. I'm going to leave it at that. I'll see you guys in the ether. Bye. Hey, pile three, welcome to your reading. You guys have the tower at the very center of your spread. Your central issue, your central energy is the tower. So you guys be going through some shit. And um, if you're watching this 
on or around the March 2020 solstice, it's not hard to imagine what might be happening with you guys. <laughs> Um, like, I feel like right now it's impossible to do these readings without thinking about what's happening on the world stage, because right now all of the human collective, we're literally all sharing thoughts because one, there's so many things, there's so many like energetic backgrounds to, you know, to this virus thing. One of them is it's actually getting us all on the same level. It's calibrating us getting us all sharing the same thoughts, thinking the same things. We're all thinking about it all day, every day. <laughs> and it's, it's calibrating us. So that's why all of these spreads, it's a weird thing to be doing right now because we all have this underlying energy of this coronavirus and this isolation crisis. So there's that, but I don't think that's all this is for you because your tower is crossed by the King of Swords. So... How I read these crossing cards kind of varies on the day and the spread. Right now, this is really vibing for me that you are being called to be the king of swords. Like, let me, let me show this card to you. It's hard to, a little hard to see, but he's actually a trinity in and of himself. He's got ghosts of himself right next to him. And he's holding a sword. This is such a divine card for me. And... I'm not, I don't use that word lightly. I don't, I'm not too into that word because I think everything is divine. If everything is divine, then the word is kind of meaningless. But <laughs> this, this card is like so divine that the word to me really applies here. So you guys, okay, so your tower moment. I don't know what's happening to you, but I think there's something happening to you, um, like physically to do, probably to do with this coronavirus crisis and energetically, where you are basically being asked to move on from something and level up like rapidly, rapidly, rapidly. And it's almost like you're, you know, you're going from zero to 60, like, like that. Um, so this tower moment is something you have planned for yourself. So if you're sitting there freaking out because, <laughs> you know, tower moments can suck. Remember that you did this to yourself and you've planned this for yourself because it is going to be so worth it because you were going, it's going to like, like rocket propel you out to become the king of swords. So all you need to do is harness that, harness this volcanic energy like bubbling up underneath you and ride it out. And just remember that you are the king of swords. You are sovereign in your authority. You are sure in your, and deliberate and decisive in your thoughts. You can trust your mind. You know how to navigate th these problems and you know how to bring everything together and you know how to rule your surroundings. Like you guys got this. You've got it. You just need to like live it. <laughs> um, yeah, and you guys are coming from in your deep past, you were the king of cups. So maybe this is kind of unfamiliar territory to you. Maybe you were used to be more of an emotional, intuitive, flowing person. Uh, but this tower moment is really tr uh, trying to get you to take that kind of feminine right brain polarity. And if you're really polarized in that direction, you're, you're going to be asked to like switch and flip the script really fast and kind of be that same level of intensity and expertise, like, and, and embody that in this swords paradigm. It, this, this is almost like a Saturn return energy where <laughs> you, you're like, you've got to like saddle up, lock your shit down and get your shit together. Um, I mean, you guys are going to have your shit together. I don't, I don't think you need me to tell you that. Like this is, this is happening to you, whether you think you can do it or not. Um, yeah. And it's really becoming the king of swords is really going to be releasing you from something, this oppression, which is this, this is the devil card in this deck. So Whatever was holding you back, guys, whether that was your own, your own habits, your own compulsions, like emotions that you were addicted to, like compulsive worrying, compulsive eating, like <laughs> compulsive sex <laughs> for some of you, maybe whatever you were doing to like feed your feelings or to eat your feelings, to numb them out and like 
this was all like devil energy. You were like oppressing yourself or you were being oppressed by your feelings. I mean, devil energy can be any number of other things, but that's sort of the a vibe I'm getting from that and as paired with this King of Cups. But don't worry that you're, you know, you're not going to have to leave behind your your right brain emotional like watery side because uh, your crowning position here is the Knight of Cups. So you are going to be able to once you temper yourself and become the king of swords, you're going to be bringing a, a message of love out into the world. You will be more balanced and you'll be able to bring bring that love out. And you're going to have some choices to be made, though. Seven of Cups here in your near future. Which, uh, I mean, that's not surprising given that you're going through this, like, massive central tower energy. So, but you're you're, like, literally in the best position to navigate these choices because you are going to be rising up and becoming the king of swords so when you're faced with a bunch of choices don't doubt yourself that you know you can figure out you know your your best option you don't need to consult you know your counsel whether that's your like human friends that you always ask for to advice and you don't even you don't need to consult the cards you don't need to consult your guides you are the king of swords you know what is best for you do not listen to anybody else's advice i mean do take a look at the data. Do do your like due diligence, doing your logic and your mental algorithms. Sit down with a pen and paper and make a list of pros and cons or you know whatever is your favorite decision making <laughs> skill. As long as it is relying on your logic, your reason, and your own internal knowing, use that to face these decisions, and you will be on point if you do that. Um. Okay, what else is going on here? Ten of Cups in your self position. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations on your Ten of Cups in your self position. This is an indication that everything is going fucking awesome for you, like energetically. Even though you're like riding out this tower moment, moment and like transforming yourself into the King of Swords. Energetically, I feel like you guys are really healthy and, um, yeah, and actually this is sitting right next to the King of Cups. So I feel like you are being asked to flip the script and become the King of Swords when you used to maybe be more of a King of Cups paradigm because you've reached such a level of like maturity and mastery with your emotions and with your ability to flow with events that maybe there wasn't a whole lot more room to grow there and you were ready to like, you know, learn a new thing. You know, if you if you were just going to stay a mermaid forever, eventually that becomes stagnant and you need to do something else. So I think that is the root of why you are facing these upheavals, letting go of these past compulsions and facing these choices and having this opportunity to become the King of Swords because you needed something new. You were probably kind of bored and you were lacking a challenge because you had like you had mastered guys to have the King of Cups in your shadow position or your deep self position and the 10 of cups in your self like current self position that's that's like so much so much mastery of everything represented by the suit of cups so you guys had to do something else <laughs> you needed something new you needed a change um your environment card is the seven of wands so i mean again this is not surprising given that we're in this coronavirus crisis and you guys are going through a tower moment you're feeling a little bit embattled but you guys still have a foot up i think you're 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 doing pretty good like you're on top of the hill and you may be looking down at all the people like clamoring for toilet paper <laughs> maybe you can throw them a few rolls but you kind of feel like everybody is you're rising up and you're leaving people behind you maybe you feel bad about leaving people behind you maybe you wish you could take everyone with you Unfortunately, you can't, guys, but try to remember that that's all, like, for their own personal best good. Sometimes people need to be left behind so that then they can go on and have their own journey, right? We could do a spread for them and see what's going on with them. And they might, you know, for them, the spread might be, you know, someone's going to be departing. You're, you're feeling a departure. Something is being severed from you. But after that, you're going to be going on to your greener pastures. So... Remember that the people you're leaving behind you at the bottom of the hill have their own journeys to go on and you don't need to feel conflicted over leaving them behind. I mean, it's still okay to feel sad and, and to grieve and, you know, do whatever you need to do to get okay with that, but they're going to be fine. They're on their own 
trajectories that they're working through in their own time. So, you know, you're not responsible for that. Okay, and your hopes and fears is the two of cups. Uh, yeah, so if you're leaving people behind, that's only because <laughs> uh, I think you know that new people are coming. Maybe you have already kind of met them and you just haven't quite like consummated that relationship yet I want to say not that this has to be a, a romantic relationship or anything but <sighs> that is a good metaphor of that's one way to to put this that's one analogy that um you know maybe somebody is leaving a relationship and they're sad about leaving that person behind and that's why they but they know that maybe you know they've met their soulmate they've met their soul family their twin flame they've they've met somebody who's much more aligned with them and much more like syncing up with their sole purpose and why they came here. And so it's a little bit bittersweet. That's why this, the hopes and fears you, you, you fear moving on, but with you guys, the outcome card is justice. So you, everything's going to, you're going to get what you deserve. And I don't think you guys need to be fearing the justice card at all. You guys get what you deserve because you deserve it. Like you guys are on the right side of justice. You know, the justice card is only feared by people who have been doing bad things and are afraid of being punished. But you guys are, you're, you're, you're so coming from a place of such emotional and spiritual maturity. And you're moving into this really rapidly. You're moving into this place of intellectual and analytical maturity that, and you're aligning with soul family. So justice is going to be served in the best possible way. Best possible way, guys. Yeah, so I don't know. Take that analogy of how this could be playing out if this is... For some people, it might be playing out it, as a relationship thing. If that's not, you'll have to use your intuition to like fine-tune that energy. Take that energy and see how that's playing out in your own life if it's not a relationship thing. But the pattern, the patterning of the energy remains the same even if it's not interpersonal relationships. It could be anything. Okay, <laughs> let's try that again. Oracle cards. Child of the cosmos, the intelligence of the universe lies within you. Yes, guys, this is a confirmation of what I was saying about how you guys are so mature, you have everything you need, and that when you have to face these decisions, only rely on your own inner authority. I said something like that earlier. Rely on your own inner authority and your own discernment because the intelligence of the universe lies within you. You are the child of the cosmos. You don't need to be looking outside of yourself for anything because you have it all within you, all of it inside of you. Trust your own internal judgment big picture thinking pleiades energy visionary inspired ideas this big picture thinking will help you ride out these convoluted tower moment changes and it will help you see that these choices you're facing aren't necessarily like as big of a deal as they might seem at first And inspired ideas, King of Swords. He is the man of ideas. He is the ideas guy. Yeah, you 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 are being called to step into the King of Swords energy because I think that is the platform from from which you will be able to implement your your big ideas. King of Cups, Ten of Cups person. Might be a big, big dreamer, a big, big visionary, but ha lack the, like, discernment. Or it's, it's not that they lack the discernment. It's just that you need a little bit of left brain, a little bit of masculine left brain energy in your life in order to take specific decisive actions necessary in order to carry out your visions, right? If you're constantly dreaming of a book you're writing, but you never, like, set yourself a schedule and sit down and like structure yourself and do it. It's going to be hard to actually publish that. And, you know, you need to navigate the whole publishing mess and blah, 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 blah. You know, 
if you're trying to write a book and you're coming from a place of king of so king of cups and ten of cups, that's all well and good for the create the creativity and the vision. But you need that king of swords in order to uh, like get the book actually published. That's just a. I hope you guys know what I mean. That's just an example. And last card. Empathic starseed, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what is not yours. I think that's what you guys were coming from. And I was going to put this card down here, which is a signal to me because with all of this cups, yeah, like obviously, obviously 10 of cups and king of cups, you guys were seriously empathic and empathic starseed coming up with that oppression, with that devil energy. Yeah, you guys were, I mean, being an empath is not is never bad. It is part of being a starseed, part of having an evolved consciousness. But if, remember I was saying, talking about like eating your feelings, if you find yourself like stress eating and I stress eat, like <laughs> that that's the thing I've struggled with my whole life. So I get it. Um, if you're finding yourself stress eating, take a look and be like, are you just like, trying to numb yourself out so that you're because you're absorbing everybody else's like trauma and absorbing everybody else's feelings. You're, you're absorbing st stuff that isn't yours. And it's funny, just early today, I was thinking about how uh, I was starting to understand how when we eat, we're like muddying up our our vessel. Like, you know, I was sitting there like munching on some like pop tarts, which is like, Blah, like why am I eating pop tarts right <laughs> well right now I'm eating pop tarts because I had to stock up and get a bunch of non-perishable food in the house so that I don't need to go out and you know get sick um so that's why I'm eating pop tarts but I don't particularly like eating pop tarts because they're gross <laughs> and they make me feel gross and I don't feel good after I eat them but I I so this this thing I'm starting to realize today I was feeling like I stress eat and especially I stress eat junk food because it like muddies up my vessel and that makes it harder for me to absorb everybody else's energy. So it's like, I'm almost like patting myself and like protecting myself with junk food. Like, like literally, like energetically, that's what I'm doing because filling myself up with all the shitty food is literally muddying up my vessel, which this is not the best way to be shielding myself from everybody else's like energetic emanations. So if that resonates with you guys, you and me both, we can work on, you know, better, healthier, more, uh, more aligned ways of shielding ourselves from everybody else's sludgy energy that we don't need to be taking on. You know, we don't want to just be eating to block ourselves off from that. We want to be finding methods of shielding and awareness that help us just observe, like, First of all, methods of shielding that bounce that energy off of us so we don't need to take it on. But then if it does get in, we just observe it and let it go. We don't need to clog ourselves up with Pop-Tarts and pizza and ice cream um, in order to clog ourselves up so that we can't feel it. That doesn't mean some time, sometimes, guys, you can't have fun eating some pizza and ice cream. I'm not here to be an ascetic. I think we can all enjoy some pizza and ice cream sometimes. And I don't think we need to be like OCD and paranoid about like, you know, oh, I'm ruining my spirituality because I ate some junk food. That's not what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> sometimes go ahead and eat your junk food and that's fine. If you're like, you know, just be mindful about doing it. If you're going, okay, I'm going to have myself a good, good ass Saturday night and order a pizza. That's great. Just don't do it reactively because you're stress eating. That's what I'm saying. And uh, I'm in the same boat there, guys. We'll work on that together. <laughs> so I think that's all I'm seeing for you guys. Happy Equinox and hope to see you guys again soon.